Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Um, we're super excited to uh, welcome Chika Wobi here today, who's the CEO of Decagon. Welcome, Chika. Thanks, Maria. It's great to be here. Awesome. Today's session is about unlocking the Africa tech talent opportunity and no better person to, to bring along and no better company to talk with than, than Decagon, uh, which is a, a company that operates at the, at the sort of nexus or the intersection of edtech, fintech and the future of work, training and placing African youth talent in remote engineering jobs for the world's leading businesses. And I know that you have people all around the world in, in um, companies all around the world that you work with. Um, Chika, I'm going to ask you if, um, if that's okay to just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and, and, and the Decagon story. For sure. Thanks uh, again, Maria. Um, yeah, so it, real quick about myself, um, born and raised in Nigeria, um, college in um, in the States from 96 to 2000, the time when the internet became a thing. Um, I studied computer science and was really blown away by just what the idea of what like a combination of the internet, soft like tech skills and like business solving big problems could do. Thought I needed to take that back to Nigeria. So I moved back a year after I graduated and started my first company, um, MTech, which was a company that first built mobile internet in Nigeria in partnership with what is now the largest telco. So the idea was to democratize access to the internet so that brilliant young people could gain skills and solve big problems and change their lives. Um, and so I, I share that because in a way, 20 years later, uh, I'm still doing that um, uh, with Decagon, just in a different way. So after my first company, MTech, I moved on to become a uh, um, very active early stage investor, investing in and, and incubating early stage tech companies in Africa. So companies like Jobberman, which became the largest job board in Africa, um, which we exited, Checky, which is now AutoCheck, and a bunch of other companies. And then about four years ago, when I looked at really um, how much, what was the scale of impact that we had had with this original idea that if you combine the internet skills and like big problems to solve, that you could transform um, a generation, um, we had had some success, but not the right scale. And so um, we thought we would go from investing in companies to investing directly in people. Um, and that's how Decagon uh, came to be. Um, so Decagon is really um, a company that uh, basically invests in people to help them fulfill their potential to be world-class um, tech professionals. We do that by combining lending, training, uh, lending and training um, to, pro to produce world-class tech talent over the last, um, now uh, this is a, will be our fourth full year. But last year, um, we produced uh, just under uh, 450 engineers. So, so we've grown fast. In our first year, we produced 29 engineers. Second year, 74. Third year, um, uh, just under 450. Um, and we've had, you know, this, all, this, all of this has been in Nigeria. We've had, like, phenomenal um, demand uh, to get in and become what we call a DECA dev. More than 100,000 people have applied. Um, We've accepted less than 1% or just around 1%. And we're seeing like um, um, of everybody who comes through the program, more than a 400% salary uplift um, in their earnings within, within you know, the whole program is six months. So like within six months of graduating, this is what we're seeing. And we're working with like more than now close to 100 companies. Um, so what we really do uh, is... Um, it's exemplified by the story of this young lady, Leslie. She was best graduating student when she finished studied civil engineering, left, worked for a couple of years, left to have children, wanted to get back in, um, wanted to become a software engineer, tried for more than a year to do that, like learning online and so on and so forth. And she just, a year later, didn't feel like she was, um, she had made much progress. Mm. Um, she came to us, we financed her, trained her and we placed her. So now she has worked, she now manages about six people working she lives in in africa and manages about six people six other decades working for indeed which is the team she works for is in is in austin um and we have you know like i said more than 500 of other uh, uh such stories like this uh so long term um we are really looking to be like the um leading source of um diverse uh, diverse tech talent um uh, globally um, what we're doing is like combining like core like engineering skills with leadership 
exposure to like real life projects, career coaching for them to get jobs by themselves or through our corporate placements. Um, and that happens over six months. Um, uh, and then when they're done, they really come out as, you know, something between junior and uh, mid-level software engineers. But a distinguishing factor really among the decadives is what we call like a high growth velocity because we've, they, they're really prepared to learn fast and grow fast. Um, and they're able to, we've seen people like um, grow very quickly after they join uh, companies. Now we have decadives like, you know, across, you know, different companies across the world, JP Morgan, Flutterwave, Merck, Pioneer, um, a lot of Nigerian companies, most of the top companies, fastest growing tech companies in, in Nigeria um, have partnerships with us where we provide them with tech talent um, and then also uh, increasingly international companies. We just entered a strategic partnership with a an Austin-based like global tech talent platform called Vertex, who are going to take over our international um uh, placement side of things while we focus more on the Decagon focuses on uh, growing out on the training and talent preparation side um, and uh, yeah that's, uh, that's 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 Decagon and that's Chica that's fantastic it's wonderful thank you so much for that summary and firstly congratulations on let me just close up that slide um, and just firstly congratulations on your traction and progress to date and more importantly, congratulations on outcomes to date um, for, those, for those engineers, but also for the companies that you're servicing who are, uh, you know, the, the tech shortage worldwide is phenomenal. And so there's sort of multiple winners out of this model. So congratulations so far on that progress and look forward Thanks. to seeing more. Um, one of the things that's, you know, become since the pandemic, but perhaps even beforehand, that's become, and this is the question, has it become a norm? Will it become a norm? And that's the whole world of remote work. Is is the world, what do you think? What are you seeing in terms of, um, you know, talent in one country servicing in another and so on? I mean, technology enables this, of course, but um, it, it also it's also up to the companies and how they organise themselves. Tell me about what you're seeing in terms of the future of remote working generally. For sure. Um so, you know, when we, we started right before um, COVID and the lockdown, and um, I always, we, we always had a, a view that uh, we want to provide talent, uh, like introduce talent globally, like provide, you know, talent for global companies that have a global mindsets across the world. And so I went on a tour right before we started Decagon, or right after we started, I went to Berlin, I went to New York, I went to talk to companies, um, I spoke to companies that had hired a lot of Nigerians and spoke to their leadership. And I found that um, I would say like only one in 10 companies were open to remote work. One in 10. Um, but that's what I found from that yeah. sort of tour, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was, you know, telling, trying to make the case that, oh, remote work is important and all that stuff. Um, but then, of course, COVID came and, of course, all of them had to yeah. um, go remote. And so the first thing about, you know, I think the most important thing about COVID is that it got everybody to at least try it out. Mm. Uh, 100% of the, of the world, effectively, business world, tried out remote. That's true. Um, and, and so that has, like, massively expanded the market, right? Yeah. Now, um, I think as the sort of world is opening up and people have choice and so on and so forth, I think there's... Um, you know, I think there's two things um, happening. One is that um, people are recognizing that, like companies, you see, like companies trying to get people back to work, and the reason why they're back into the office, right? We're hearing that, like in New York and like parts of the world. The reason why they're doing that is because I think the company leadership recognizes that, in as much as remote is 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 powerful, right? In terms of what it allows you to do. Um, but like in-person collaboration is still like the technology and the tools that will make collaboration as effective remote and in-person are not yet um, there, right? We don't yet have the exact same experience, which means that generally speaking, companies, leaders are coming to the conclusion that um, they can collaborate more and move faster if they can get people 
back in person. So, so that's one thing that people are seeing and thinking about, right? But on the other hand, having experience remote and given the reality of talent shortage in many, talent shortage and talent uh, cost, right? Which are related, right? Yes, in yes. many of these, you know, in New York, in Austin, in San Francisco, London, Berlin, all these places, mm. given that reality, the 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 um the competition to remote is not really in person the competition okay. to, so, so the alternative to in person is not remote the alternative to in person is nothing is like not <laughs> executing not moving forward not wow. doing what you need to do not having the people that you need yeah and so the fact that the world and a lot of the world has gone remote means that um people know that if they get good at it um, and, and I think that's the, the key point I'm trying to make out of all this is that it like being remote is not the same as in person. It, it is something that being good at it requires um, uh, some efforts to be good at it. And if you can be good at it, mm. then you are giving yourself a huge competitive advantage mm. because you're now not bound, not limited, constrained by the shortage in your local market so all this is to say that i think i i'm certain that remote is here to stay um i'm certain that i do i think about it is sort of i talked about when i was in college 96 to 2000 internet became a thing then the internet bubble burst and it was like oh well internet is not really a thing it's not really and then but then people companies went back and amazon and people went back and said okay how can we use the internet well to open up frontiers and to solve real problems and to gain a huge advantage and then serious sensible advances began to be made and yes. uh, google and all that stuff so that's what i think um the phase we're entering into with remote now is companies thinking okay mm. it's not oh remote is not just oh magic is all solve all our problems no 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 um, but how are we going to use it uh um intentionally mm. um and um uh uh, skillfully to mm. um, expand our not just shortage. There's also a diversity uh, yes. benefit, right? Um, yes. uh, to 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 For being sure. good at it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's sort of uh, what you're saying. What it reminds me of is you know that rush to something and everyone tries it out either because they're forced to, like with COVID, or because it's the new big thing, and then it always bursts a little bit, and yeah. then it a more sensible, mature conversation. And that's what you're saying about remote yeah. work. I agree yeah. with you. We're seeing that too. Um, but it does require some internal change on, on the part of the company in the way that they work. And that requires mm -hmm. effort. And that always takes a little longer. And I guess mm -hmm. on the other side of it uh, is the, the engineers themselves, the remote engineers. And so it would be a really interesting experience to be one of those remote engineers who goes through a program like yours and then perhaps could be placed with someone in Germany or in the US or in Asia. And so preparing them for those cultural differences also is a, is a challenge potentially. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just about the engineering work, I guess, but it's about the team that you're working with and so on. Tell me mm -hmm. about how, you know, how you manage that because this is, this is out to the world. I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I think the the when we think about, you know, when I, I think, look, I might spend all my time like thinking about this, right? Like and when I think about remote, the implication mm. of remote, um, uh, you know, it, it it has, you know, two implications. One is that um, the, 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 the talent that we're training um, can work in more places, right? That's great, right? They don't they don't have to work in just Nigeria. They can work in more places. But also, like we said, like if being if remote is not just a given, the benefit of remote is not just a given. You have to be good at it, mm. and it means that engineers have to. And these are engineers who are, for the most part, launching their careers in tech, right? And in that launching your career in tech, there is you know we spend a lot of time thinking about how what is the process of an engineer achieving like high velocity yes. um, on, on projects so that they can contribute effectively. Mm -hmm. And traditionally that has happened through um, in-person onboarding, right? Like not, companies haven't typically been so structured around onboarding um, and, and like uh, um, sort of leveling up inside the company's uh, uh, infrastructure. 
they haven't necessarily many companies haven't necessarily been um because when they just somebody comes in, they just say, Oh, go spend some time with this person, and they just sit beside the person and they just yeah. sort of learn informally and very quickly they're up to speed, right? Yeah. Uh, but now uh for the engineer um who is going into a company that may not have figured out how to do this in a remote world, mm. there's a question of how do you so there's a lot of non-technical side aspects mm. of Right. How do you end up within three months of going into a company being able to contribute, yes. being able to be viewed as a valuable member of the engineering team? Mm -hmm. How do you make friends re in like remote? How do you make people care about you and want to share things with you? Mm -hmm. How do you uh, organize your time and your, your, your efforts so that you're delivering value quickly and you're achieving visibility? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of non-technical mm -hmm. um uh, skills or yeah, non-technical yeah, concepts that the that uh, that come about because of um, the fact that um, you know close to close to uh, uh, ninety percent of our graduates' first job is remote, even for the ones working in Nigeria. Yes. In Nigeria. Is. Right, they're starting out their career remote, so it's a different type of starting out their career. Um, I think it's very exciting. I think um, it's very challenging for somebody like me that you know I'm sort of a steward of that 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 um, sort of journey for them, or like a guide, right? Yeah, that journey. And, um, I find it you know challenging, um, but we put a lot of effort into uh, figuring that out, and um, um, with that intentionality, we're seeing, you know, some good success. Um, um, a big part of it, uh, Maria, is just the concept of humility, where um, people, both the engineers who have newly acquired all these skills and are very excited about what they can now do, right? Um, yeah. We help them understand that there's still often a gap that is not apparent between, like, what you have and what you need. And... Uh, what you need to be successful, right? Yes. Uh, um, and therefore, um, with that precision of that humility, then comes like sort of designing into the way they onboard um, ways to get the help, right? And that's why I talk about relationships inside the company and all that stuff. Yes. So very exciting. Um, I think companies do. I mean, we control the the we control the the, the decadence experience. So we're able to um, mold it and shape it. I think. What is interesting and what I've spent a lot of time thinking about is how to help the companies who we don't control mm -hmm. their own sort of space, how to help them understand and also to uh, sort of introduce the concept of humility to them as well, like to, yeah. to understand the gap, to not take it for granted that when you add an engineer, he's supposed to be good. Uh, or, well, I mean, he's good, but he's, he or she is supposed to be able to contribute mm -hmm. um, and understand what the gaps are and yes. have some design to yeah. accelerate. Uh, that onboarding. I think that's a really interesting point. There's definitely something in um, uh, working with companies or or making a network of helping companies network with each other on the best ways to manage, to support, to integrate remote engineers because it, it's a big yeah. thing. There's a lot of people doing it, and and they're sort of potentially yeah. sort of isolated in that. So that's a that's a yeah. great idea. One of the things I love about what you're talking about, because underneath the thread of what you're talking about, you're talking about training in engineers. You're talking about companies and their challenges in in from the other side. Um, and this is a holistic sort of thinking. And it seems like um, Decagon also thinks quite holistically around the way it offers education. It's not just part of a chain, but you're thinking, you, you do offer a holistic, it's, it's co-working and financing and living and learning. Tell us about that model because it's, it's not traditionally education, you know, we only do this bit and, and they, you know, students have other parts of their lives, but you think more broadly and more integrated. So tell us more about that. For sure. You know, Maria, it started from why we, why did we create Decagon? Why did I, after like spending a decade as a founder, multiple exits, uh, investor, like why, why am I doing this? Why do we said we'll do this because we want to produce like world-class tech talent and um, to do it as quickly as possible. Um, Nigeria has tremendous unemployment among young people. Um, a lot of brilliant people are like not able to have access to opportunities to fulfill their potential. So if that's the goal, then and 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 we recognize that 
for like whenever we are successful, like for every engineer that gets produced, right? Like they are the earning, right? In the first just first five years of their career is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. And so the most important thing is, is to get them there and almost like spare no cost or, mm. or, or don't hold back. Like don't be afraid of nothing. Be afraid of taking on, don't be afraid of taking on anything mm. because you're, it's a difference between like somebody in the next five years, like being unemployed, earning nothing or, or earning like, you know, uh, the average earning of the people before they come to our program for those who are earning is like close to uh, $500 a year. Mm. Right? So the difference between like, you know, $2,000 over five years and $300,000. Yes. Right? So then therefore design for success. Because a, yeah. a, a software engineer that is not very good is no use. Yes. Right? So um, if you have a training program and they learn a little bit of CSS, HTML, they can do a little bit of stuff, but they're not good enough yeah. to work for, right. you know, global companies like Indeed, then this problem. So as a result, we said, let's solve all the, pro all the blockers. Like yeah. in Nigeria specifically, there are blockers around financing. People cannot afford to pay. Yes. People cannot afford to, uh, not, uh, to, to own, to study full time because mm. they need to, um, hustle like to survive right so let's let's finance their tuition let's also finance like a sustenance stipend mm. so they can focus focus then we know that this is very hard we're trying to get them good in a very short time so let's um f organize the experience so that they are living with other people who are on this journey mm. most of these kind of programs have quite high drop-off rates um um whether they are um online only or whatever like drop off is like a huge thing we have in decago now over like 11 cohorts so far that we've done um we have less than one percent drop off we've had like people if you start you're gonna finish if you finish we have 100 percent effectively 100 percent like 99 percent completion mm. and then 99 and then 100 percent placement within six months yes of graduating and then we're giving people loans and then we have 100% payment, like 100% of the people are paying their loans. Yes. So the type of uh, success uh, metric mm. comes from one of the things is like also like really removing the blockers. So yes. uh, we finance them to live together, mm. we learn together, they support each other. Mm. Um, and um, then we support them on like getting a job afterwards. We coach them so they can, if they don't want to work, Mm. through our partnership that's fine they can go work wherever but we want them to be successful so we coach them and when they're done now we're building out the alumni network investing yes. more in it so continue to support yeah. each other uh going out and when we i think that mm. i mean that's the reality of um if you look at like the most successful institutions they didn't necessarily design for that but that's no. whether that's like in education or in the armed forces or just anything that you see as a very or even like startups like here yeah, like the paypal map all those things right like a big part of it comes from when you look back if you like reverse engineer yes. you see it's um uh a 360 a whole a holistic uh design um that delivers that that level of success so this is why we've been intentional about it for the nigerian sort of context and i think as we go into other markets we try and understand what are the blockers? It's not a given that the way we're doing it in Nigeria is necessarily how we have to do it in other places. Yes. Um, but the point is like go in there, understand what do they really need, and then don't be shy um, because of you know what invest how sort of investors think about different things. Like yeah. the real problem in a in a repeatable way, and you'll be fine. I love it. I love the holistic thinking. It's rare, you know, because it's hard to do actually to, to, to sort of not only design, but, but sort of, you know, have all the 360 elements because you're really sort of focusing on the learner and their needs in order to get them to success rather than a supply driven. We do this, you come to us and we'll do that. You know, it's, it's wonderful. It's great. And obviously the results are there. So congratulations on Thank that. You. Um, just one more question before uh, time's up, which is just around, you know, what's next, where next, um, and what are the, for you and the company, um, even the industry, where are the, the sort of 
future barriers or future challenges and and sort of future story i'm interested in any of those areas for sure for sure so when i started the company um i was very focused on like helping nigeria um so brilliant young nigerians to fulfill their potential right um and as we've grown as we started out started our journey we started to see um, need or the opportunity to expand that vision. Um, we see like, you know, it was during over the last three years, we had the whole George Floyd um, uh, issues in America and just really a lot of focus on diversity. Um, and we've got, got to find out that like, you know, in the US and Europe, that companies want um, more representation, yes. more uh, racial representation in tech, more gender representation. Um, and given our sort of background, um, then we see ourselves as being able to um, really be the largest supplier of diverse talent, um, of, of bringing people from underrepresented backgrounds into um, tech company. Um, so this is what we want to do. Uh, we still, like Nigeria, is still our, we have now two um, uh, like campuses effectively um, in Nigeria. Um, but then we're looking at where, like, other geographies to launch the training program in. Um, and so you should look forward to in the next few months, like, seeing us launch in new countries. Um, and then also we, we find that the um, student loan the financing program that we put in place um, from the very beginning um, is working very well. It's working unusually well relative to other... Um, other segments, like other people who are trying this, right? And so we want to spend a little bit more time looking into it and seeing how we can make it available um, in other markets, like to to like as part of our program. But also in, in Nigeria, there are some people who can't access it, especially uh, people who still need permission from their families and so on and so forth, because they need guarantors to access the student loan. Um, and so we find that women are disproportionately affected by this. And so we're trying to design around, uh, design ways to uh, remove that blocker, uh, to make the student loans that we have more accessible to more uh, segments. And related to that um, is the getting more women. Like we started out um, without any intentionality, we were getting about 10, less than about 9% of our cohorts were female. Um, with, with some intentionality, we've been able to get that up to like 25%. We want to... Uh, get that to 50%. Yeah. Um, and so um, just thinking through sort of the partnerships and the uh, programs that would help us deliver that. Um, yeah. 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 So there's plenty on the radar. You've got a, you've got a lot of plans. It's wonderful. I love to Absolutely. hear, you know, there's sort of, as you say, there's intentionality in there in terms of the mission um, for diversity um, and, you know, sort of gender diversity particularly it's, that, that's wonderful because it's you know that sort of lack of women in tech is um is problematic for sure in, even mm -hmm. in terms of design and, and design of products and design of solutions um mm -hmm. you know like you say we want a 50 50 uh split as much as possible um and also new campuses new new areas moving into new places and that sort of growth mm -hmm. is testament to the the outcomes that you're you're achieving so um chica thank you so much for spending time with us thank you um i know that the audience will be really interested and excited to hear what you're doing um and we look forward to perhaps next year at our summit we can connect again and reflect on the last year. So looking forward Absolutely. to watching your progress and congratulations on all your traction to date. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Thanks for having me and thanks for the great work that you guys are doing at Holland IQ. Thanks, Chica. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Right, Bye for now. Bye.